welcome to this revision video. In this video we're going to be looking at the reactions of strong and weak acids. So specifically looking at the difference in reactions between um, the weak acid ethanoic acid and the strong acid hydrochloric acid. Now this applies to higher tier combined science and also more specifically the triple chemistry unit um, looking specifically at carboxylic acids. So we're going to be looking at the reactions between these two acids and carbonates. Um, we're going to react them with magnesium and we're also going to have a look at the difference in pH using a pH probe. So the first thing we're going to look at with these is the pH of our different acids. Now I've got a pH meter here. You could do this with universal indicator but that can be very difficult to work out the pH sometimes. Colour is a very subjective thing, so there can all, uh, often be disagreement over the pH of a substance using universal indicator as it relies on you deciding on the colours. So I've got my pH probe here, and um, we're going to have a look at hydrochloric acid first. Now, acidic substances have a pH of less than 7, and the lower the number, the more acidic it is. So let's take a look at the pH of hydrochloric acid first. And we can see there very, very low pH, less than one down at 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Okay, now we are going to take a look at the pH of our ethanoic acid after I have reset the pH meter. There we go, so I've reset the pH meter and now I can have a look at ethanoic acid. So I'm expecting this to be a higher number than the hydrochloric acid and we can see there that this is a much weaker acid, it's hovering around uh, 3.7 on the pH scale, so a much weaker acid than the hydrochloric acid. So the next reaction that we are going to look at is reacting them with some magnesium metal, okay? So they should both react with a metal to produce a salt and hydrogen. However, the names of the salts will be a little bit different and also the rate at which the reaction happens will be a little bit different. So we're gonna have a look at some observations and we're also gonna test for hydrogen using the squeaky pop test. So first of all, I'm going to pop one piece of magnesium into, I'm going to do two pieces of magnesium into my hydrochloric acid, making sure that in a second when I do ethanoic acid, I add the same um, number of pieces. So I'm going to add them in and we can take a look. We can see some quite vigorous fizzing. Um, as the reaction progresses, I will be able to feel that the tube will get hot. So I'm going to try and trap as much hydrogen in here as possible and then do my squeaky pop test once it has built up a little bit. And you can see there that we have definitely got hydrogen present in this reaction. Now this tube is really warming up now. It's still reacting, still fizzing away. And I'm just going to leave that for a minute whilst I do the same thing with the ethanoic acid. So again, a control variable has to be the sizes of the pieces of magnesium and the amount that we are putting in. So these are roughly the same size. Doesn't need to be perfect for this. This is just a qualitative experiment. I'm not collecting data. I'm not collecting numbers. It's just to show you. So I don't need to be absolutely perfect, but I'm going to try and keep it as close as possible. So now I'm going to add in my two pieces of magnesium into my ethanoic acid. And you can see straight away, although there is some fizzing, it is definitely less vigorous than it was for the magnesium. So it's much, much slower. Okay, much, much slower reaction. I'm going to get my splint ready again and we're going to see. So I'm going to hold it for a little bit longer. It's going to take a bit more time for our hydrogen to build up. So there was a very, very quiet whoosh that time. Okay, 
there is some hydrogen being formed, but it's being formed at a much slower rate than it was with the hydrochloric acid. So it's taken a long time to be able to build up enough to do the squeaky pop test. But you can see it's still reacting and um, it's still producing hydrogen. So we've got the same product, but it's at a much slower rate. So the final reaction that we are going to do is these acids with calcium carbonate. Now, acid plus carbonate produces a salt, water and carbon dioxide. We test for the presence of carbon dioxide using lime water. So I have my main test tubes with my acid in, but I also have some test tubes with lime water in as well and a delivery tube to connect them. So again, to start us off, I'm going to do hydrochloric acid. OK, so we'll have a look at the observations in the tube and also what happens with the um, lime water. So I'm just trying to get spatula full in. I'm going to have to be very, very quick with this so you can see it fizzing straight away. OK, lots of fizzing. Let's get it into the lime water, see what's happening here. So there's definitely a gas being produced. This is our hydrochloric acid and you can see that the lime water is quickly turning cloudy because of the presence of carbon dioxide that is being bubbled through it. So you can see there, very quick reaction and a large production of hydrochlor uh, hydrochloric acid, carbon dioxide straight away. So now we're going to do the same thing with the ethanoic acid. We're going to try and get roughly the same amount of our calcium carbonate powder in there. If I was going to be more accurate, I would use a weighing boat, but again, this is just for demonstration this time. So we're going to pop that in. You can see straight away it's fizzing, but it's not fizzing anywhere near as much as it did for the hydrochloric acid. So my bung is in with my delivery tube and let's see. So again, we've definitely got a gas being produced. Let's see how long it takes for this lime water to turn cloudy. It's a nice continuous stream of bubbles, but you can see it's not as rapid as it was for the hydrochloric acid. And in fact, I think the hydrochloric acid, I actually lost quite a lot of the carbon dioxide straight away. So you can see it's very slow to react with the lime water. And what's actually happening, um, the reaction with the lime water. So the carbon dioxide reacts with the calcium hydroxide that is in the lime water and produces calcium carbonate. Now calcium carbonate is insoluble which is why it turns cloudy because it can no longer stay dissolved in the water. So that is why your lime water actually turns cloudy. It is a, uh, a precipitate, it's a solid within the liquid. Now you can see it is indeed turning cloudy but it's taken much longer to get there. But That has proved that um, the same product is made in this reaction. So we've still got carbon dioxide being produced, just again at a much lower rate.